Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all the thousands that march this afternoon. In solidarity, we are joining forces. We're sending a signal to the world. And we are sending a signal of hope to Julian Assange in Belfast. This will be over soon. We are growing in numbers despite, despite the fact that the media in this country is avoiding the topic, obviously. And if you want to know how many actually were marching this afternoon in the carnival, keep in mind that when we encircled Parliament, we had calculated that it would take at least 5,000 people to form a human chain, which we have succeeded and we have the evidence. It was a great achievement. Some of the local newspapers here in this city reported that a few hundred had showed up. So if you want to know the real number of those who marched, look for the papers this evening or tomorrow and multiply it by four or five. That's probably closer to the truth. We are growing in number and the support is growing all around the world. We don't know when the next step will be in the courts here in the case of Julia. They are taking an awful long time in deciding whether they will hear his appeal or not. It is spurious to say the least. I have long ago lost all faith that justice can be had in the courtrooms here. That will not just be enough to fight in the court. And because we know that this is a political persecution that has to be solved through political pressure, Wikileaks decided to go on a tour to Latin America in the last few weeks. We met, we met policy makers, we met human rights activists, we met press freedom activists, artists and presidents in five countries. It was astonishing and refreshing to go through these countries and not be met with skepticism. All the media in these countries showed interest in the topic. You did not have to convince anybody about the fact that it's not a conspiracy theory, but a fact that the CIA was plotting to kidnap and assassinate Julian Assange in 2017. People in Latin America know fully well what the CIA is capable of. We did not have to convince Lula da Silva, who met us a month after he was elected president, that a massive lawfare was waged against Julian Assange. Lula da Silva spent himself more than 500 days in prison because of a lawfare. He knows, and there is documented evidence, that the Department of Justice in the United States had a hand in that lawfare against Lula. Now he is president. He is a supporter of Julian Assange because he knows what he is up against. Jeremy mentioned Lopez Obrador, the Mexican president, which we met, Joseph Farrell, my friend and colleague, and I. And we sat with him for two hours. Lopez Obrador has been a supporter of Julian for a long time. We met him a few days before a trilateral North American meeting was held in Mexico City. And the Mexican president met Joe Biden and he did speak his mind on what he thought the Biden, the president, should do in the case of Julian Assange. There's only one thing to do. Don't wait for the outcome of the extradition case in London. Just drop the charges. It's the only right thing to do. we felt and we got from Gustavo Petro, the president of Colombia, in a country 
were finally they have elected a progressive president. We also met Luis Arce, the president of Bolivia, who knows what we are up against and committed himself to full support. We met Alberto Fernandez, the president of Argentina, who said, yes, we are for it. We will do, I will do anything individually and collectively to help you in the Same day as Vice President Cristina da Kirchner. And we know of the support of others, of the president, like Boris in Chile, and João Mara Castro in Honduras. All the major countries south of the United States borders are now on the highest level supporting Julian Assange and the fight for his freedom. The entire continent. So we are not alone. We are not a few hundred people. We are millions. The combined population of these countries exceeds the population of the European Union without the United Kingdom. And it is just growing. We will go from continent to continent and we will spread the message. And I will, I will assure you that more and more will come on board because there's an understanding, even though there's electors to admit it here, that this is a political persecution, a horrible one, a torture against one individual and are the gravest threat against press freedom in our times that we have to fight. We have to fight against it. to support the case that Julian Assange is a political prisoner and that he is politically persecuted. I mentioned the, uh, the plan to kidnap or assassinate Julian in 2017. There was always also the bugging in the embassy uh, where his meetings with lawyers were recorded secretly and material, legally protected material was stolen. There's a case in Madrid where uh, the evidence is, has been presented in writing and with testimony. And investigative judges in Madrid, they want to, they want to have, hear uh, from Mike Pompeo, who was the head of the CIA in 2017, about his involvement in these crimes, because they are, these are crimes. He is, certainly is a criminal. But the Department of Justice in the United States has not even answered the authorities in Madrid when they are sending a request that they want to take a witness statement from Mike Pompeo, who now has an ambition to be the next president of the United States of America. So help us God. I am fascinated by the fact that we are having out books, of all kinds of books, where people are exposing themselves. I'm not going to name the one here from the Prince, uh, but I haven't even read it, and I'm probably not going to do that. But another Prince, yes, the Dark Prince on the other side, Mike Pompeo, has also published a book, I think about 10 days ago, where he admits to the political nature of the persecution of Julian Assange. He admits it openly. He says, I lobbied the Ecuadorian government as Secretary of State in the U.S. to hand over Julian Assange. Shame. I lobbied them. Well, we know what kind of lobbying that is. I know, I, you might have seen the, the film Godfather where uh, the, the Godfather Corleone says, I made him an offer he couldn't refuse. That's the kind of lobbying they do against that people in that country. Sticks and carrots. We don't know what they threatened. We don't know what the sticks entailed the offer that you cannot refuse. But we know what the other side of it was, billions of dollars in aid to the despicable president, Lenny Moreno, in that country, who handed Julian over for million, billions of dollars. That's a lot of carrots. And this all is admitted in a book by the former Secretary of State and the former head of the CIA. And he admits in that book that he massively 
as CIA director and secretary of state, pushed the Department of Justice to, to, to issue an indictment against Julian and go after him with full force. So much for the independence of the Department of Justice. So much for this to be just another legal case. It's a political persecution. You have it in black and white. You have it admitted by the former Secretary of State. Don't bother buying that bloody book. The best captured will be in the legal documents on the large file that will be presented in the courts here in the extradition hearing when they finally happen. It gives me joy that we can send this message to Belmont's prison. We are on the winning side. We are on the right side of history. We are the ones who understand the justice. You are the good people. We will win in the end. Thank you.